All right, we've looked at silk roads, we've looked at sea roads, and now it's time to consider some sand roads, namely the Trans-Saharan Trade Network in Africa. So if you're ready to get them brain cows milked, let's get to it. So the Trans-Saharan Network was a series of trade routes that connected North Africa and the Mediterranean world with interior West Africa, and to some degree, the rest of Sub-Saharan Africa. And just like other trading routes we've covered in Unit 2, they existed long before our period began around 1200, but in this period, these routes began expanding, and that's going to lead to some juicy consequences. But first, you need to know the causes of that expansion, and the the big one here is innovations in transportation technology. Now, in case you don't know, the Sahara Desert is, you know, a desert and a giant one at that. And the environment there is, as we say here in the South, about as dry as a popcorn fart. The point is, this is not easy terrain to cross. And so a massive turning point in the development of these networks was the introduction of the Arabian camel about a thousand years before our period started. But in our period, we start to see the use of camel saddles, both for riding and for carrying bigger loads of merchandise. Additionally, just like on the Silk Roads, caravanserai were established along these routes as well. And if you forgot what those are, they're basically little rest stops along the trade routes where merchants can rest and sleep and eat. And with merchants now able to travel more comfortably and carry bigger loads and find shelter along the way, by 1200 the Trans-Saharan network expanded larger than it had ever been. And I know you're sitting there thinking, but Heimler, what did they trade? I got you, boo. Various regions exported gold and crops like kola nuts, which were a fabulous source of post-classical caffeine. Other regions exported horses and salt, and it was especially salt that was in demand across the continent. And so the point is, each region specialized in creating and growing various goods, and that difference created created the demand to trade with each other and created the occasion for the expansion of those trade networks. Now, just like we've seen with other trade routes, the expansion and increased use of the Trans-Saharan network also led to the rise and expansion of powerful states. And the most important one you need to know is the Empire of Mali right here. Now, this state had been established in the 13th century, but Islam had been introduced to this region hundreds of years earlier. And what happens during this time when a state converts to Islam? Well, if your answer was they get connected into the economic trade partnerships throughout Dar al-Islam, well then, you're right! And that religious and economic connection meant that Mali, once it was established, grew exceedingly wealthy because of its participation in the Trans-Saharan Trade Network. And not only did Mali export goods of their own, most notably gold, but they also gained wealth and power by taxing other merchants traveling the trade routes through their territory. And I reckon we ought to get our comparison pants on, because that sounds an awful lot like how the Sultanate of Malacca gained power and wealth in the Indian Ocean trade. Both of them controlled strategic points along high-traffic trade routes, and both grew in power and wealth because of it. And without doubt, the most extravagant an example of Mali's wealth was on display in its most powerful and influential ruler, Mansa Musa. Hey, Grandpappy, what's that thing you say about rich people? Well, that boy's got enough money to burn a wet mule. That's it, and I have no idea what that means, but Mansa Musa had that wet mule kind of money, and let me illustrate. Mansa Musa, as a Muslim, decided he would embark on the Hajj, which is a pilgrimage to the Muslim holy site in Mecca. And he went ahead and left with a giant entourage and stopped for a while in Egypt to resupply. And while they were there, Mansa Musa and his crew injected so much gold into the Egyptian economy that the value of all all existing gold plummeted. And the point is he could do all that because Mali had grown so rich by participating in trade across the Trans-Saharan network. And with the expansion of Mali's power under the influence of Mansa Musa, he further monopolized trade between the north and the interior of the continent, both increasing the wealth of Mali and facilitating the growth of existing trade networks. Okay, click here to watch more of my Unit 2 videos and click here to grab my AP World Heimler Review Guide, which has everything you need to get an A in your class and a 5 on your exam in May. It is the fastest way to study, and I think you're going to dig it. So I'll catch you on the flip-flop. Heimler out.